Tomorrow marks 50 years to the day since South Bend learned that Studebaker would close for good. The company had been in South Bend since before the Civil War, but there are still questions about what happened and what, if anything, could have saved Studebaker. WSBT's Kristen Bean has more. The world learned of Studebaker's fate on December 9, 1963, but the company's demise began long before then. The company and the city really grew hand in hand, and unfortunately by 1963, Studebaker was no longer healthy, and although it was a shock, I don't think it was uh, terribly surprising to many who had followed the company closely. Andrew Beckman is the archivist at the Studebaker National Museum and has spent years researching the company. This is a 1964 uh, Studebaker Daytona hardtop, and this is actually the final car to be built on the last day of regular production in South Bend. Beckman says before 1963, the Studebaker Corporation had been on the brink of catastrophe several times. It barely made it out of its first decade. The company entered receivership in the 30s as a result of the Great Depression. Then in 1954, Studebaker was saved after a merger with another struggling car company, Packard Motor Car Company. But less than 10 years later, there was no one to save Studebaker. Studebaker just simply could not compete anymore uh, at a profitable level making automobiles. Essentially, Beckman says, it was a matter of economics. Studebaker's facilities were aging. The dealer networks were weak. For years, the company had an uncompetitive labor contract, and it just wasn't selling enough cars to be profitable. Sadly, that, uh, that's how many people termed it at the end there. The public was simply not interested in what Studebaker was selling. And what's worse, the company was competing with the big three automakers, Ford, GM, and Chrysler. Beckman says even in its best years, Studebaker couldn't compete. The deck was really stacked against them, and it's uh, one former executive for Studebaker put it as such in an interview. He's like, imagine you're in a poker game with the three richest men in America. How long do you think you're going to last? And the interviewer said, well, not very long. He's like, well, unfortunately, that's, that's what happened to us. The Studebaker could win some hands, and they had some good years, and they really produced some fantastic products, but ultimately they just did not have the resources to compete at that level. In 1950, at the peak of Studebaker's success, 24,000 people worked in South Bend building 400,000 cars. 13 years later, about 7,000 people were building 120,000 cars. And on December 20th, 1963, the last Studebaker car rolled off the assembly line in South Bend. The handwriting was on the wall for Studebaker, and it's really a tribute to the folks in the community that South Bend was able to respond to the crisis quickly, aggressively, and really get, the, get on the road to recovery uh, when they did. That was WSBT's Kristen Bean reporting. And coming up tomorrow night at 6, WSBT's Kelly Stopsinski will have more on the Studebaker closure anniversary, talking with some of the employees who were there and remember that day.